assalamu alaikum i hope so you all are fine and doing very well uh, so here i am again today with another lecture this will be our second lecture uh, from the series of oral surgery lectures uh, for the exam preparation of uh, bds final year i hope so uh, you all are fine so let's start the, our today's topic which will be on the principle of complicated exodontia let me enlarge the picture so that you can uh, see the slides very well okay so today we will be discussing regarding the complicated exodontia so there are some principles that you need to follow whenever uh, there is a case uh, in the surgery department uh, that you interface uh, which will be complicated like with the one uh, which can't be Uh, done in uh, simple surgical techniques you need to do some complicated surgical procedure uh, and for that you need to do the following uh, you have to follow the following principle so first thing that we need to follow is uh, 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 whenever we contract such a case we have to do a uh, flap surgical incisions basically we have to give uh, give different type of the flaps so one of the thing is uh, here you can see in the clinical picture we have to raise different types of flaps uh here so there is a section of soft tissue that uh, outlined by the surgical incision so what is basically a flap basically it is a section of soft tissue you can say uh, if i can uh, show you here with the help of a pen okay let me uh, show you yes this is basically a soft tissue uh, over the gingiva or any other yes like this this is a basically the section of the uh, soft tissue gingiva um, present here you have to take it and you have to surgically incise this portion and uh, you have to raise it with the help of periosteal elevator and this thing that, that you will see will be a flap so basically it is a so section of soft tissue which is outlined by the surgical incision it carries its own blood vessel as you can see that there is a blood accumulated here so uh, what you need to do Uh, is uh, that you have to raise a flap basically first uh, it allows surgical access to underlying structure basically if you need to remove this tooth uh, for example like this uh, canine or first premolar uh, so you need to raise its flap and then you will get a surgical access to this underlying structure here and another thing that can be placed to original portion so it can uh, so if there is a supplication luxation or a uh, tooth has been fallen down you can again place it in its position and it can be sutured and is expected to heal basically what you do is if you need to remove this tooth uh, or do any surgical complic uh, com complicated procedure you have to raise the flap uh, you need to do the curettage or other th surgical procedure you want and then you can uh, place it back to its original position and then you can suture it back and then it is expected to heal uh, okay uh, and it heals uh, very quickly now uh, what you do this picture can uh, depict uh, can tell you uh, very much better that first you need uh, to give a surgical incision with the help of a blade parker a blade a scalpel you have given a incision here you can see that and then you what have you done you have uh, re retracted and lifted the flap a section of soft tissue above uh, here and you can see like uh, the root of the uh, second premolar is being very much visible and you got the surgical access so you can uh, do whatever you want uh, uh, with here uh, so it is basically providing you a greater uh, uh, visibility and greater surgical access uh, so uh, so what are the design parameters for the soft tissue flaps so basically these are the following and uh, design parameter for soft tissue flaps base of the flap must broader then the free margin to preserve the adequate blade supply so whenever you are uh, giving such a surgical incision for the local flap or any other tissue soft tissue flaps you should always remember one thing in mind that the base of the flap should be much broader than the free margins so that uh, it it can preserve adequate uh, blood supply so you can see here in this picture it has he has this uh, the uh, the picture has been self explanatory that the base of the flap is much broader then is free margins which are very much smaller you can see that and it is uh, preserving the as much adequate blood supply as it much it can so there are margins here you can see that the base is uh, much more broader uh, than the free 
margin so that uh, its uh, uh, blood supply can be uh, preserved as much as possible then we come here uh, you can see that uh, uh, there should be a, uh, it should be of ad adequate size for several reason because uh, it uh, provides adequate access one thing uh, that you require uh, more is the surgical access uh, and it could the access should be as much adequate as you want then it helps in you easy uh, flap reflection so whenever you cut a section of uh, the soft tissue here uh, it should be uh, easy for you to uh, reflect it or retract it with the help of uh, the uh, elevator or a refractor then it uh, then the long straight incision with the adequate flap reflection heals rapidly than the short turn torn incision so this is one of the tick uh, of the clinical point of view, you should remember that you should always give a long incision rather than interrupted short incisions because the short incision will take a lot of time to heal uh, rather than a, a long straight incision uh, with adequate flap reflection. So uh, always give a, a single a long straight incision uh, in spite of uh, short tone incisions because it will help uh, your healing uh, proper. Then uh, these are there are other uh, parameters as well. Uh, when we then we come to envelop flap, it is between the two teeth anterior and one teeth posterior to the area of surgery. So uh, whenever you are giving the envelop flap, you should keep these in mind. These these two things in mind that uh, it should involve two teeth anterior and one teeth posterior. So it can be like uh, lateral incisor canine and one first premolar, and it should be given with releasing incision basically one tooth anterior and one tooth posterior to the surgical area so uh, so always remember that envelope flap uh, should be given uh, two teeth anterior and one teeth posterior to the area of surgery so basically uh, if you are uh, giving an uh, incision uh, uh, in the area like uh, uh, here so you should always uh, keep the two, uh, two teeth uh, anterior and one teeth posterior to it uh, so that uh, you can uh, easily uh, raise the flap as well and give a releasing incision, one anterior and one posterior to surgical area. Then, uh, it, uh, when uh, then uh, full thickness mucoperiosteal flap, there is a, you should remember that full thickness mucoperiosteal flap always involves the bone as well as the mucosal uh, mucoperiosteum as well. So it involves the mucous uh, membrane over the flap and then the periosteum bone as well. So incision must be made over the intact bone. So whenever you are giving the full thickness mu mucoperiosteal flap, the incision must be over the intact bone, and it should be six eight six to eight millimeter away from the bone defect. So keep this uh, figure in mind. It can be asked in your uh, MCQ as well as in your any exam regarding how much uh, millimeter away it should be given from the bone defect, six to eight millimeter. Then you should avoid the injury to the local anatomical vital structure because if you uh, will hurt uh, the any nerve or any blood vessel then uh, it will be uh, very uh, difficult for you to uh, prepare, uh, to keep uh, the, your required surgery in a very uh, less invasive way. Uh, so always uh, uh, avoid injury to the local anatomical vital structure like mental nerve and lingual nerve in the region of third molar. So you, as you can see that uh, the uh, inferior lower nerve passes uh, to the mandibular molar near molars and there's mental nerve which is uh, passing towards the mental foramen so you have to uh, remember that these vital structures are passing over uh, the uh, near the tooth so you have to uh, keep uh, your incision six to eight millimeter away from them or a little bit in, uh, away from them so that it does not uh, interrupt or disrupt uh, their blood supply like uh, in this page you can see that then the releasing incision should uh, should cross free gingival margin, not directed on the facial aspect of the tooth, not directly on the papilla. So basically, what is uh, how, how do you give the releasing incision? The releasing incision basically is given across the free gingival uh, uh, margin. So basically, you always give the receding incision along the free gingival margins, uh, not directed on the facial aspect like this, or on on not on the direct on the papilla. So you always give uh, the incision on the free gingival margins. Incision must be carried out with a firm continuous poke. So always remember that whenever you give an incision, you, uh, your uh, your hands should not uh, should not uh, uh, be you should your hand should always be firm, and you always give a firm continuous poke and a single uh, incision that that is that is very well because it will be heal, heal better. 
and it will leave less car and, and then uh, uh, we have envelope flap so we will discuss a little bit about envelope flap uh, uh, in envelope flap incision is made in the javel circus to the crystal bone to the periosteum full thickness flap refractive so what are we doing in envelope flap uh, we give the uh, incision in basically in the gingival sulcus uh, to the crestal bone to the periosteum and full thickness flap reflected so it is basically in envelope flap we are giving the full thickness mucoperiosteal flap uh, in which we are uh, contacting the intact bone as well uh, removing the uh, periosteal um, layer and the uh, mucous membrane in the gingival sulcus uh, and what are its advantages the advantages includes avoidance of the vertical incision we can avoid the vertical incision we can approximate is very easily and what what are the disadvantages disadvantages include the risk of end tearing we can uh, tear uh, any other soft tissue or any nerve uh, limited access and visualization basically uh, there is limited access in this type of the flap and uh, and we can't visualize it very much uh, and uh, there is a possibility of injury to the palatal vessels and nerve so basically you can you you can uh, injure a palatal vessel or nerve in this type of the flap now you can see uh, this is an envelope flap and it is uh, given here and uh, you can see that the base is broader and uh, it is given like from the gingival margin gingival sulcus here and it is given uh, towards the crestal bone and the uh, 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 periosteum has been removed and uh, so it is a full mucus thickness flap basically here then we have three coordinate flap which is also known as triangular flap so you should remember that uh, in this type of flap uh, envelope incision is given with one uh, uh, re releasing incision so in this in envelope incision is given with the one releasing incision so horizontal incision made along the gingival sulcus and vertical incision extending from the vestibular pole to tendon and papilla to gingiva so what are we doing we are uh, giving a first a horizontal incision like this and uh, uh, which is given along the gingival sulcus here and then the vertical incision extending in from, uh, from the vestibular pole to the interdental papilla okay like this first you are giving the horizontal incision along the gingival sulcus and then you are giving the vertical incision extending from vestibular fold to the interdental papilla to the gingiva basically it is indicated in surgical removal of the root tips uh, small cysts and epicectomies so so it can be asked in your exam as well uh, where you need to give uh, the three corner flap the three corner flap or triangular flap is basically indicated in surgical mole of root tips or small cysts and epicectomies it can be asked in exam or viva and what are advantages include greater access and the growth stability and reapproximation however the disadvantages include vertical component more difficult to close and mildly prolonged healing so uh, the healing is basically a little bit longer in this case and vertical component more difficult to close so it provides basically greater access and good stability and reapproximation. So you should remember this: that this is the three corner flap. You have given first a, a horizontal incision, then you have given a have given this uh, vertical incision uh, from the gingival sulcus to the vestibular fold here. So this is three corner flap. Basically, it provides you a greater uh, access and better stability. Uh, However, it is very difficult for you uh, to uh, remove the vertical component, close vertical component, and uh, there is a mild prolonged healing. Then there, there is a, a four corner flap and envelope flap with two releasing incisions. Basically, in, in in this four corner flap, you are giving a two releasing flap. In the three corner flap, you are giving a one releasing incision. In the four, you are giving a two releasing incision. So you should remember this thing in mind that uh, uh, in which type of flap uh, how much releasing incision are you given basically it is indicated for the excess surgical uh, proce procedure so whenever there is excessive surgical procedure you might uh, require the four corner flap what are advantages basically advantages include excess excellent access so it is basically providing you the excellent access uh, then it allows the surgery to perform in one or more teeth so uh, it can uh, allow you to perform the surgery in one or more teeth However, disadvantages include produce it produces a defect in the attached gingiva. So basically, it is producing any type of defect in the attached gingiva. So this is basically the picture of four coordinate flap 
which is known as the episodal flap uh, you can see that the, the base is much broader as compared to the infringing gravel margins and uh, the two type of the releasing incisions have been given uh, in the four corner flap you can see this and it, it, it is providing basically greater access and you can access uh, do the surgery of two or three tooth at a time then we have semi lunar flap so uh, the name semi lunar uh, uh, tells you that there will be a curved incision uh, just beneath the vestibular floor so you will give a cu curved incision just beneath the vestibular floor uh, at the lowest point of the incision must be at least 0.5 cm from the gingival margin so the lowest point of the incision must be at least 0.5 cm from the gingival margin indicated for episectomy small cyst and root tip so basically, uh, such question can come in your exam as well. Uh, where are they indicated? So you should remember that uh, the the, uh, the seminal uh, seminal flap is indicated for epithelial smaller cysts, and roof tip as well. Now, uh, uh, what are the advantage? Adva advantages include a small incision, uh, uh, easy reflection, and no intervention at the periodontium, and easy to ma to maintain the oral hygiene. So uh, it, it advantage include that uh, it uh, will be a small incision. It will be easy to reflect. Uh, there will be no intervention at the periodontium. Easy to maintain oral hygiene. This advantage includes uh, limited excess uh, possibility of incision performed right over the lion. So you can uh, uh, the the disadvantage include the limited excess and possibility of incision performed right over the lion. So here you can see that uh, semilunar flap. There is a small uh, you have given a small incision and basically it is a use for the episectomies or small cyst okay you can see that this here there is a small cyst present or an episectomy you have to do here then what are the principle of suturing basically the function of suturing will hold the flap in the position like if you have raised the flap then it will uh, hold the uh, flap in the position approximate the two wound edges basically it's approximating the two wound edges it has basically helps and you helps you in the um, hemostasis uh, in the, uh, controlling the blood helps to hold the soft tissue over the bone maintains the blood uh, uh, and elastic tissue in the lower socket so these are some of the points you need to know uh, what are the principles of switching then simple uh, there are different types of suture simple and proper suture what is simple and proper suture this the suture simply goes to the one side basically the suture is going to the one side of the wound comes to the other and it comes to the other uh, side and is tied in the knot at the top basically you are topping you are uh, tying the knots at the top like here and it is coming from the one side and uh, uh, passing from one side and coming from the another side this is the simple and proper suture that you are uh, giving here okay so you cr cross uh, you cross the one side of your uh, suture um, side with the, with the other from the own following other things you should keep you should uh, remember that needle should enter at the right angle to the flap to make the, the small possible hole in the flap so it, it should be always given uh, at the right angle like this uh, uh, to uh, to flap, to make a small possible hole in the flap and uh, the minimal amount of the tissue between the suture and the edge of the flap should be three millimeter this is you should note this for an mcq that the minimal amount of the tissue between the uh, these are uh, and two this should be three millimeter the suture should not tight too tightly suture should always uh, tight a little bit tight not too much tight there should be no blanching of wound edges though you should not not see a blanching of wound edges in three corner flap vertical incision must be closed separately so in the three corner flap you need to close the vertical incision separately suture should be placed uh, for approximately five to seven days after the extraction uh, after a week you or a five days you should uh, recall the patient and remove the incisions okay now the principle and techniques for surgical extraction what are the indications for the principle and techniques of surgical extraction indication includes when initial attempt at the forceps extraction failed patient has dense and heavy heavy cortical bone short clinical crowns hyper cement hyper cementosis of the roots 
so what is happening here uh, it is indicating that when initial attempts at the force attraction is failed patient has dense and uh, heavy cortical bone uh, short clinical crown hypercementosis of the root uh, so these are some of the indication that you need to know whenever there is hypercementosis of the root whenever uh, there is uh, uh, short clinical crowns or patient has dense and heavy cortical bone and when initial enamel at force of extraction failed so then you need to go for the surgical extraction however uh, if these conditions are not present and you can uh, extract the tooth under the simple uh, 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 simple extraction as well and however uh, when there is wide divergent root you can go for the simple extraction in you should know that maxillary sinus is suspended to include the roots of maxillar and molar so in this case you need to go for the uh, surgical extraction crown with extensive caries then you can go for the uh, extraction surgical extraction so what are the techniques uh, for the open extraction so basically the techniques for the open extraction include uh, whenever there is a, uh, the single rooted tooth you need to Uh, do first to the raise the adequate flap reflection, then uh, you get the access for the bone removal. Uh, reset extraction for step. Basically, you have to uh, reset the extraction for step here. There is a bit of buccal, buccal side and cortical bone here uh, to obtain better mechanical advantage. Okay, force straight elevator down to the pedial space of the tooth. Then you, uh, you with the help of uh, the elevator. Uh, you need to uh, straight elevator. You have to uh, force it down to the pedal space or tooth so that it can make it a uh, loosen. Final option: remove the bone over the area of the tooth. Like you have to remove this bone. One half to two third of the length of the root, basically. Okay. Purchase point made. Uh, then the purchase point is being made, and the crane pick then used for the extraction. Purchase point is being made and crane pick then used for the extraction. The bone edge is inspected. Basically, the wound is irrigated and then it is sutured. So, what have we done? First of all, uh, we uh, for the single rooted tooth, uh, we uh, for for the first for the single rooted tooth, we have first uh, uh, place the adequate uh, remove the adequate flap. And then we have got the access for the bone removal. Then uh, we have. Uh, Uh, Resected our extraction forcep, grasped a uh, grasped a little bit of the buccal uh, cortical bone and then the lingual cortical bone to obtain uh, better mechanical advantage, forcing our um, uh, uh, straight elevator down the pedial space of the tooth. Then the final option was to remove the bone over the area of the tooth, one half of the third of the length of the root. Purchase point is being made and crane pick then used for the extraction. Bone edge is edge are, are then inspected, wound is irrigated and sutured. Techniques for the open extraction. If there is a if there is a multi-rooted tooth uh, like mandibular molar, what you need to do with the tooth which has two bo- uh, two roots, you have to evaluate for the sectioning roots and the removing bone. Okay, then a small amount of crystal bone is be- basically removed. Crystal bone is being removed, and the tooth should be sectioned. Basically, you have to remove such tooth in the sections. Like in this picture, you can see that. Small straight elevator is then inserted to mobilize the section roots. Basically, small straight elevator helps to loosen the tooth and and to mobilize the section roots. Uh, for steps, uh, straight elevator or crier elevator use elevate the tooth from the socket with the help of uh, the crier or uh, the uh, straight elevator or for step. Then uh, you use to elevate the tooth from the socket. So in this way, you can remove a multi-rooted tooth in the mandibular molar. However, in the multi-rooted tooth uh, for the maxillary molar, first you have to do is Reflect the flap, okay. And then the crystal bone is removed. Had to expose the bifurcation area, uh, so that you can expose the bifurcation area. Bar used to section mesial buccal, distal buccal, and parietal root. So basically, bar is being used uh, to section the mesial buccal, distal buccal, parietal root. So you are basically sectioning the tooth. Then the roots are elevated with straight elevator and and delivered with a crier. So uh, you are doing like this thing. Now you are first. Uh, Um, reflecting the flap, uh, crystal bone is be- being removed to expose the bifurcation area where the uh, roots are being divided, and then you are sectioning one by one uh, roots with the help of a bar, and then with the help of an um, elevator or uh, uh, like a straight elevator and uh, pries, you are uh, luxating the roots and making them loose, and then uh, extracting the tooth and the roots itself. Now, removal of the root segments and root tips. 
for the removal of uh, the root fragment root tip patient should be repositioned to achieve the adequate visualization instruction basically you uh, need to reposition the patient so that uh, you can get the adequate visualization instruction and if there is irrigation and suction uh, technique unsuccessful then the tease the loose root apex with the root toothpick okay uh, you can tease uh, it with the, the root toothpick uh, those root tip can be removed by using small fat elevator so basically with the help of uh, the small fat elevator you can remove the root uh, tips so there is an open technique in open techniques what happens the flap is being reflected uh, bone removed to expose the buccal surface of the root okay root delivered by the straight elevator basically root is being uh, delivered by the straight elevator there is another technique which is known as the open window technique this is very much important and can be asked in your exam as well what happens in the open window technique the first we have to uh, reflect the flap apex area of the tooth root is located okay bar used to remove the bone from the apex of the root uh, and then the instrument is inserted uh, into the window and root pushed out so this is very much common if uh, you are uh, finding difficulty to remove a tooth you can make a window like this uh, by locating the apex of tooth and then inserting your bar to remove the bone from the apex of the root and then the instrument is being inserted in the window and the root is being pushed out, out, out. so policy for rooting the uh, leaving the root fragment what should be the policy for leaving the root fragment if, if there is uh, any root fragment being left in the socket so more root tip less than 4 mm it can be left no evidence of peri apical pathology or infection if there is no any any evidence of peri apical pathology or infection inability to visualize the root tip if you can't vis visualize the root tip uh, your ability to visualize it in, uh, then removal of root tip will cause obstruction to the adjacent uh, structure if you see that the removal of the root tip will cause session to the session tooth so in that case you you should you can leave it and proximity to the um, in the inferior uh, dental nerve if it is very much close to the inferior dental nerve when you think that you might uh, in um, touch or dis disturb the inferior dental nerve so that will be difficult for you uh, if there is a proximity to the maxillary sinus then you uh, need to leave the uh, your uh, root in that position and uh, what what should be the uh, ex multiple extraction sequence uh, so this is a very much commonly asked question in the uq as well as in exams so you should always remember that in maxillary teeth uh, the, the first you have, first you need to uh, remove the maxillary teeth in multiple extraction then go for mandibular teeth then posterior to the anterior teeth uh, from one quadrant to another a reflection of minimal buccal flap uh, to facilitate extraction and low alveoloplasty and then you have to attend you need to always give irrigation and, and suturing so always start from the maxillary teeth and then move towards the mandibular teeth from the start from the back to the anterior teeth from one quadrant to another reflection of minimal uh, buccal flap to facilitate extraction and low alveoloplasty so you have uh, you have to uh, very less uh, reflect the, the buccal flap uh, uh, to facilitate extraction and low alveoloplasty and then you need to do irrigation and the suturing as well so this was all about uh, my today's lecture i hope it was being useful to, in today's lecture like just uh, i will uh, need to summarize it in one or two uh, lines so we have what we have discussed is uh, the principles of the complicated exodontia the cases which uh, you don't uh, do, uh, do with the help of a simple extraction techniques uh, what uh, in such cases first we have to remove uh, uh, we have to extract the tooth by raising flaps. There are different types of flaps: uh, open neck flap, open fla uh, flaps, uh, and local flaps, uh, and uh, semi-linear flaps, triangular flaps, uh, four corner flaps. There are different decisions uh, that we need to give uh, for raising such flaps, uh, and uh, these flaps uh, provide access, uh, uh, greater access for the removal of uh, such tooth. Uh, and then what we do? Uh, there is a multiple extraction sequence that we need to follow. So with the uh, with by keeping these principles in mind, we can easily remove the complicated uh, surgical proce uh, procedures. So that can't be done uh, in normal surgery uh, in the ext extraction. So hope this lecture was useful for you guys. Uh, do remember me in prayers. And if you have any another lecture you want me to cover, uh, do tell me in your uh, comment section as well. Till then, stay tuned and uh, good afternoon.